As we look at what's next for the industry, um, you know, every time we have a major breach, there's a lot of warnings and reminders to consumers to change their passwords. Um, why in 2018 are we still using alphanumeric passwords? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we are on a mission, I think you've heard in a, in a lot of what Microsoft has said over the past nine to 12 months to be passwordless. Now, what does that mean? It means that passwords as I think about them are gonna significantly change. It means if you think about your phone, right? Um, I have an iPhone that I carry. So I authenticate to that iPhone with my thumb or my face, all of my applications. I have an authentication method that's not a password anymore. By the way, I'm using my thumb or I'm using some, uh, something else to authenticate. That's what passwords should look like to your consumers and your corporate entities, by the way, over the next you know, 18 to 24 months. So that the means of authenticating is frictionless. So so it's easy for people to use. They're not you know, having to remember a complex password and then it's the same password. Here's the challenge. Most people reuse the same password for their six and 10 you know, sites that they use, right? Because it's the one they remember. When that gets breached, their six to 10 sites that they're using online are also compromised, right? We just want to take that away and say, you'll never have to remember, think about, change a password in the future. We want you to authenticate in ways that are easier for you to authenticate and still things that are incredibly unique to you, like your face, or your thumbprint, or your voice, and by the way, an ear is just as unique as a fingerprint. So things like that is what we're trying to build into the ecosystem. Really interesting. But what happens, you know, we don't, when I have a password that's stolen, I can change my password. But obviously, when you have facial data or fingerprint data, you can't change that once it's been taken by someone. So, so can you talk at all about how the industry is thinking about that issue? Yeah, the security around so that, that without getting super duper technical, the, the hashing, the algorithms, the security around securing that biometric data is very, very strong. By the way, I, I never say anything can't be hacked because anything can be hacked, okay? But the security around that data is incredibly strong. And if by chance your facial recognition was compromised in some way and reused, you still have, like I said, your ear, you have 10 fingers, you have toes, by the way. <laughs> we don't want to go there, but you do have toes. Um, but there are other ways, voice, you know, you think about me, I have a very unique voice. It's not, it wouldn't be easy for someone. Yes, they could record my voice and pretend to, to reuse it, but they'd have to be saying the right words, right? And by the way, that's a common, what we call vishing attack, so voice phishing attack right now, is to actually get you on the phone and have you say yes, right? And that yes, they will reuse in different systems. So it's something when you, you know, I just don't answer any unknown numbers anymore. It's my own security control. If it's an unknown number, I fear if someone wants to reach me, they're going to leave a voicemail. I will not answer a number that isn't from someone that's programmed to my phone any longer. Um, but there, are, there will always be, you know, the joke is why do um, people rob banks? Because that's where money is. There will always be hackers. They will always be thinking of new and innovative ways to steal money or to steal information.